Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm here with my buddy Jeff. Also known as Mech Master. And we were talking the other day about how cheap could you get set up to weld, you know, all the equipment uh, for basic projects. And we're wondering if you could do it for under $200. Now, in order to prove that we could actually do it, we needed to build a project. So we are starting out with some tubing and a pre-cut board to make an end table. And we'll meet back up here at the end to compare notes and see how it went. All right, so I've been shopping for tools. Oh, I love shopping for tools. Anyway, I'm standing behind a small mountain of gear that I picked up to be able to make this little project. It's amazing how many things you need when you actually think through every step of the way. I'm just gonna take a look at each of these items and tally up the budget as we go along through the build. But before we do, I'm sure everybody's wondering what kind of welding machine I picked up for this. Look at this thing. It's the smallest and cheapest welding machine that I have ever bought. Now there were surprisingly many options in the 60 to 80 dollar range when it comes to stick welders and I landed on this Yes Welder Arc 125DS which is regular 99 but had a 40 dollar off coupon. Now as far as welding process goes, if you are setting up to weld thinner material, you might not want to go with a stick welding machine. You might be better off with a flux core machine on a tight budget. Let's fire this thing up and see how it runs. Right here, I'm running a 3 seconds of an inch 7018 at 90 amps on a flat plate, and it seems to be laying in a bead just fine. So I think it's gonna work for our project here and probably be good enough. Now the first step in this fabrication project is gonna be some marking as well as some measuring. So I picked up some basics for that. From Harbor Freight, I paid full price for their uh, basic tape measure, as well as a little speed square that's gonna help me uh, mark everything out, both those straight cuts and 45 degrees. And then in order to make the marks, in my Amazon order, I just got a couple of Sharpie markers. Even though they leave a little bit wider line that uh, is perhaps less precise, the visibility of it is much better when you're using a tool like an angle grinder, which is what we're gonna use to make these cuts. I need to start off with 45 degree miter cuts to make the perimeter for the top. And so I'll mark one end and I like to mark two sides whenever I'm using an angle grinder to cut to help me have a guide to cut more straight. Now for cutting and fitting the material, I'm gonna be using an angle grinder and I decided to go with a kit that came with two styles of guards, one for regular wheels, one for cutoff wheels, as well as three cutoff wheels and three flap discs all in the box for 37 bucks off Amazon. The brand is Shal, which I've never heard of before, but it seems like it'll work okay. My angle grinder is set up ready to cut to keep myself safe. I have some basic safety glasses from Harbor Freight. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my Lincoln Electric welding gloves I picked up off Amazon. And you might not have seen this one coming, but it's a drill press vise that I got from Harbor Freight. That's just gonna keep everything in place so it doesn't move around while I'm trying to make my cuts. I'll cut here and then measure my length. And I'm gonna go about an eighth of an inch longer. That's about three millimeters longer than what's necessary because I know I'm gonna to have to do a little grinding and trimming up because things don't usually come out exactly right with an angle grinder at least not with me handling it. After this, I'll just keep cutting and cutting and cutting some more. And I have a real moment of truth here because I don't have enough material to redo this. I just really have one shot at it. And I need to make sure that this board is gonna fit down inside really well. So I've lined up all the pieces in a border around and I've put the board in there. And overall, it's fitting okay. I know I'm gonna have a few gaps I'll need to fill, but I can see some places where I can just trim it down and grind things to fit a little bit better. So I spent a little time getting things fit up nicer. And then I'll mark each of the corners so that they don't slip around on me when I go to actually weld it together. Now that all the parts are cut, I'm ready to do some welding and I need a few more things to be able to do this. I have a couple of needs here and a couple of nice to haves. I have some 7018, 330 seconds of an inch electrodes. You could use a 6013 or 6011 or whatever you want. Um, I chose 7018 because I think I'll get a little bit nicer bead appearance just from Harbor Freight. Now, I also need a welding hood, and this surprised me on Amazon how many in the $20 to $30 range there were. So this one is a Deco brand, and it's an auto darkening helmet that I picked up off Amazon for $22 bucks with an $8 coupon. So I got the headgear installed on this welding hood, and you know, it feels pretty lightweight and cheap, I'll be honest with you. I 
put it on for a minute, and while I wouldn't want to wear it all day, it's not terribly uncomfortable. The biggest drawback, I think, to this over the welding hoods that I'm used to using is the viewing window is just really small. Now, like I mentioned, I picked up a few nice to have, so I got some 6011 electrode. That's gonna be a little bit better for tack welding, and a little bit nicer chipping hammer just from Harbor Freight. This should uh, help remove some of that slag without having to use that cheap one that came with the machine. And finally, I picked up two welding magnet squares to help hold everything as square as I can since I'm not able to work on my welding fixture table. The concrete floor I'm working on is obviously not flat. I think my best bet to get this thing to line up and be flat is going to be building it vertically. So I've clamped one piece into the vise, and then I'll use these magnetic squares, and by attaching the next part vertically, that's gonna keep it from pulling side to side on me because I have that long edge on each side of the square to hold it in place. I've lined up the little notches, and then I'm going to go ahead and tack weld it in place just using some of that 6011. Now once I have a couple of tacks on each, I'm just gonna tack on one face. I'll put that upper bar in, just using those same magnetic clamps in both sides and lining everything up, getting a couple tack welds in. Now before I add any more tacks or weld this out, I'm gonna make sure that board fits in just right. So I'll set the board in place, and this is also a good check to see if it's sitting flat, and I can see that it's a little bit out of flat, so I'll just use that extra piece of material, and since I've only tacked one face, I'm able to move it around a little bit, and I'll bend it so it's flat. I went a little too far and went the other direction, and came out with something I'm pretty happy with. So from here I can tack the other side up and weld it on each side. Now in order to avoid uh, any more distortion than what's inevitable, I'm going to weld on the faces first. And here I've switched over to 7018 to run these welds and it's going pretty well, but you know, this machine, it feels just a little sluggish to get started. That being said, for 60 bucks, it'll stick stuff together. That's pretty cool if you ask me, but is it just as good as a more expensive machine? No, it's, it's just really not. That's the fact of the matter here. Now, before I run the next weld, I'm just gonna chip off a little bit of the slag using that chipping hammer, and then I'll brush it here with this little wire toothbrush that came with the machine. Now I can weld that inside corner joint and things are good to go. I'm gonna switch over from my cutoff wheel to the grinding wheel and just flatten everything out. Next, I need to turn my attention to some tabs to keep the wooden panel from falling down through this top frame. And I'm just gonna make those out of some sides of this square tubing, because that's really all I have to work with. So I've cut one inch long section of it, and I'm going to split on each of the corners to give myself some little one inch by one inch squares that I can just set in place with the magnet square, tack them up with some 6011, and I'm just gonna weld these out with that 6011 here on the bottom. Now I'm turning my attention to the legs, and I've cut four pieces 17 inches long, which will give me the right height of the table. And after cutting each of those pieces, I could just use my magnetic fixture blocks to hold them in place and put three tacks on, once again with that 6011. And once I have three good tacks on there, I can prop this thing up on its side so I can run these outside welds in the flat position, which is pretty nice. It's definitely better than being right down on the ground. And the table frame is pretty much done. Now I need to clear those inside fillet welds that I put in the frame so that it can drop down into place. Now that it's in there, it actually looks pretty good, I think, uh, for something put together with this very basic toolkit. All right, well, mission accomplished there. So uh, we're gonna meet back up with Jeff and compare my kit with his and chat a little bit about that. Um, but before we do, I'll talk about the three big ticket items. First of all, the welding machine itself. Um, what do you say about a machine that costs 60 bucks and it works? That is awesome. That being said, it didn't have as smooth of an arc as I was used to, and it seemed like it took a little bit of time for the arc to get going. The angle grinder kit. I was super impressed with it. I thought it worked great. It had really good power. I don't know how long it'll last because I just used it on this one project so far. Now the welding helmet itself, it wasn't really all that comfortable, but the optics worked pretty well. The auto darkening feature seemed to work well. I can still see, so I mean, that's good news. Now let's get back with Jeff and see uh, what he came up with. All right, we're back. Tim, 
Did you build a table? I built a table. I, I built a table. Some of the differences, I'd say one of the big things is uh, you went with a vice type clamp where I just went with some just 399 clamps. Something else that was different was the way we marked our parts. I thought what Jeff came up with was pretty unique. I just bought a couple of Sharpies off Amazon. I went with a straight up razor blade. So um, not very many people know about this trick, but just a very simple razor blade gets you a very fine, definite line. So Jeff, what, what tools do you think you'd get next? I mean, if you wanted to go a little bit beyond this basic $200 set that we got, what would you look for? Yeah, I would probably upgrade my welder um, just based on, you know, duty cycles and the ability to get some of those extra features. How about you? Well, yeah. So I would probably pick a different welding process. I would upgrade to maybe a flux core welder that could go with a little bit thinner material, especially starting out as a hobbyist. Some of the other things that would be nice are a welding table, even a portable folding one. I think you have, do you have the Harbor Freight one or yep. something like it? And in the process of making my own. So stay tuned for that. Oh, sweet. <laughs> So uh, anyway, something like that would be helpful. Also a better saw for cutting, like a chop saw, even an abrasive <laughs> chop saw. Huge time saver. You can definitely do it with an angle grinder. It just takes a, a bit longer. Awesome, well thanks Jeff, that was a ton of fun. Um, hopefully you learned something, enjoyed this video. If you do, uh, let me know in the comments or hit that like button. And until next time, weld safely and we'll see you then.